now welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And uh, today on the show, we're doing a little bit of a Lab Rats revisiting of the past, Lab Rats Redux, perhaps. Um, you know, you guys have a TV in your living room. You might even be watching us on your widescreen television these days, something along these lines. Have you turned it around lately? You've seen all the connectors back there? Now, if this sounds like something we've done before, Sean, of course, was it episode two, I think? It was episode two. It, if we'd have waited just like one more episode, it could have been exactly 200 episodes later. <laughs> anyway, oh, wow. so in episode two, let's have a quick look at that. I'll, let me talk you through it. So there, there we are. We have bad haircuts. We're younger, of course. And on, on my right, you see a, uh, a gray backing of a television. Now, that's a, a CRT television. It's one of the first generation high definition widescreen uh, TVs. Tube. With tube. a tube. It's a tube, right? $800 it cost me, of course. That's four years ago now. Now, the connectors on the back, of course, uh, have not changed substantially. There are some tweaks to it, and today we're going to look at uh, what things you need to know about high-definition connectors, some of the legacy connectors, and just a couple of tips and tricks along the way. So that's what we're going to do today on Lab Rats. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, let's uh, take a break, and when we come back, we're going to demystify TV connectors today Again. on Lab Rats. Again. Again. Well, in order to show you uh, TV connectors, we need uh, a television. So yes. let's get up a high-definition TV here. All right. Oh, oh very good. Okay. Awesome. All right, so your standard flat panel, high-definition television, one of these babies back four years ago, I think probably cost $10,000. Today, you probably get it for about the same price as I bought that $850 Toshiba widescreen CRT. Right, so these, uh, this is a 30-inch uh, screen, uh, more or less, 32. And it's, it's a few hundred dollars. It's like six or seven hundred dollars for that. You can get a 46 or even a 50 inch if you get to one of the, the value price models for under a thousand dollars easily. Amazing. And uh, I, what's good to see is that you know, there are um, all, pretty much all the, the connectors we're actually going to talk about today are represented for the most part on one of these TVs. So, you know, the legacy connectors still continue on some of these models. Uh, however, there's a key, the key thing is not to use some of the older connectors because you're not going to get the picture. Right. So let's talk a little bit about HD first, Sean, because really the first two connectors we're going to talk about is, high, is you're going to require to get a high definition picture. Right, high definition. So, and this is the, the main reason why we're doing this uh, all over again is because since we did that first one, high definition has become you know, less a fringe for the real enthusiasts and more an average uh, everyday sort of thing. It's mainstream technology. It now. is mainstream. Yeah. So now it's, it's not uncommon to. Uh, go into the store and see a television that is serving up a 1080p as the, uh, the picture format, which mean, basically means uh, we have uh, Santa still up there, I guess. He got his lost way back. So um, I don't know whether you could hear that, but there's someone walking up there. So it's uh, 1,900 pixels across and 1080 pixels down. Yeah. So it basically means a really big, high-resolution picture. Now, this is new because back in the day, high definition for the most part, for most of these TVs that were out there was 720p, which is only 1280 pixels across and 720 lines down. Right. So 1080 is, is the big new standard, and to get 1080 out of uh, your TV, you need a 1080 source, i.e. a Blu-ray player, and a cable that's capable of sending it. Right. So now these old school ones that you used to have no won't good. do it. Right. And I think it's, it's, it's worthy of mentioning, too, when we talk about 1080, uh, a 1080HD signal, there's 1080i. Mm -hmm. Right, which means interlaced, which means actually you actually get half of those pixels. You're getting yes. 540 uh, lines drawn at once, and then in the next uh, one thirtieth of a second, the next set. Yeah, so like the odds and then the evens. And the odds, evens. And Whereas they 1080p, flicker back and forth. Right, and uh, so you know, to the, to the human eye sews it together, but compared to a 1080p picture, which is all 180 lines all at once, uh, you're getting uh, it's, a, it's a cleaner, tighter, crisper picture, I guess. Right. Now. When, if you're going to go for broadcast, you're going to get satellite cable, something along those lines. You're going to get either 720p or 1080i uh, inbound. It will be converted by your television. 1080p, as you pointed out, is a newer standard available from Blu-ray. And I guess that's the only source, really, at the moment. Yes. That's right. Okay. Well, you, you can put uh, Blu-ray onto 720p TVs and all that, but 1080p will give you the full resolution that my, it's my, no, my point being, though, that 1080p, is the, as a source, really only comes off Blu-ray today. Uh, Who else does it? Anybody else? I think, well, it comes off the PlayStation as well, okay, PS3, okay. and uh, some of the gaming consoles, I'm sure. Got so. it. Okay, good. So let's get into it. So if you want to connect your 1080i or 720p set to a high-definition source, and especially if it's a broadcast, uh, you're going to be using something called HDMI. HDMI. Right. 
Now, HDMI is a, it looks a little bit like, if you're familiar with, uh, with, with USB, it looks mm -hmm. kind of like a, a USB connector on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, however, it is, uh, it's a pretty ingenious technology introduced, uh, you know, I guess more than four years ago now. Uh, and the nice thing about this particular cable is it's one slot, right? So yeah, this slots slot. into the back of the TV, it slots into the back of the device that's sending mm -hmm. the information, and what it carries uh, both video signal and audio as well. Yeah, it's got these little pins that are sort of hidden in this uh, little connector here, but they're all around so this slot. Right. So when you plug that in, there's, there's just one cable for the picture and the sound, which is really nice. It keeps it simple. It's easy to install. Uh, there. There you go. It. He's plugged in. And so it's one cable fits all. Well, one cable for, for you know, both audio and video. So now we can plug this into the Blu-ray player at the other end or into your notebook, which has one as well. Yes. So we just do that and now we're connected and we're seeing pictures. Yeah. Well, you're not seeing pictures because it's on this side yes. of the screen. But it's very simply. And speaking of which, I am plugging this into my computer these days. Mm -hmm. uh, computers actually have HDMI out now. Um, and they will, so it's an easy way to connect your computer to your television if you want to do that. Now, let's get into the nuances, I think, of HDMI because that's worthwhile. And that is that when, when it first came in, it was a specification, right? So they, the, the technology gurus that build these technologies, they, uh, they actually build the specs as they go along, and we improve as we go. So the first generation, of course, HDMI 1.0. Um, we all probably used it at some point. Um, and really, it's not worth mentioning any of the other specifications until, until we get to 1.3. And 1.3 basically has a, had a high-speed version. Mm -hmm. So HDMI high-speed in spec 1.3. Um, allowed you to get a better get get a signal for 1080p. We talked about 1080p being the, the highest resolution, high definition television that you're getting. So if you wanted to connect your Blu-ray player with a 1080p feed or your PS3, you said into your television, you need a one point spec 1.3, and you should be able to see that on the packaging itself. Yeah, and you mentioned USB as uh, as a sort of you know parallel to this sort of thing, and it's, it's more parallel than you think because they had uh, USB 1 and then they had USB 2, which actually multiplied the speed by a big factor, uh, you know, I think 48 times the speed or something like that. So, uh, but you needed the cable that could handle that. You couldn't just use your old USB 1 cables with USB 2 and expect the full speed. So and that's same the here. same here, right, exactly. So the rating of the cable is actually going up, carries more data. Uh, so they get a better picture. Now, you will come across HDMI 1.4. It's a brand new specification that's, that came out in the uh, first half of 2009. Uh, it started shipping, I think, you know, in the t summer of 2009 into the fall towards the holiday season. And uh, so you can buy HDMI 1.4. Now, that does have the high-speed version. That's true. It supports high-speed. It supports something called Ethernet, or basically networking technology, 100 megabit per second networking technology mm -hmm. across the same cable. Now, you've got a picture coming across, you've got your audio coming across in 5.1 surround sound, and, you've all, and it's all digital, and then you've got an Ethernet, or you're carrying an internet signal potentially up to 100 megabits per second to put your networking both ways into your computer, into your computer, and, and sorry, into your TV and out of your TV. Right. So you can see uh, a lot of these gadgets these days will uh, have uh, updatable firmware, and I think. Uh, this one doesn't have it, but uh, we've seen TVs and Blu-ray players that have the Ethernet cable in the back, so that would be wrapped up into the cable now. Right, so that's the idea. HDMI is simplicity in terms of getting data in and out of um, the TV. It also actually has a, an audio out as well, but mm -hmm. we won't go into that. So for more information on this, uh, we're going to put some links into our show notes because it's, uh, it's a bit complicated, but we'll list that, and you can go to a site where you have it's all described in technical, technical glory. Now, I remember back in the day, you called monster morons. I did, because yeah. Because of these very cables, because they were so expensive. They were very expensive, exactly. They were like $100 plus. Yeah, well, a, th a three foot cable, a meter cable would run yeah, in like, 99 to $120. Like this one right here. My personal thing right now I, is I'm not going to shell out 120 bucks for the HDMI cable. No way, it's, Jose. That's insane. It's stupid. That's more than the DVD player. It's dumb, and, I, and sorry, Monster, and all the rest of the you morons that uh, make. Did I say morons? These are people that, that make much. all of. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, that make the high end cables. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. You can use a reasonable $30 or $40 cable, and even that is stupidly expensive. So is that still the case? Are Monster no, still morons? Well, it's interesting. No, so we met with, with Monster a little while ago. Uh, he's going back a couple of years now, maybe. And they said, OK, guys, we know we overcharge for our cables. They didn't quite say that, but they kind of let us know that they had messed up and they had a lot of complaints and that sort of thing. So uh, no, they're not still morons. They brought the pricing down. They've, they actually now have the different ratings for the cables and they're priced accordingly. You c they're still a premium cable provider, mm -hmm. but ultimately uh, they have uh, 
for the most part, apologize for the, uh, for the user's pricing that was in, in place there. Uh, still a premium cable. They still sell it on good shielding and that kind of thing. But ultimately, you can get HDMI cables now for $12 or less. For that That's matter. what it comes down to is uh, the, if you don't have properly shielded cables over a longer stretch, you'll lose data between the source, i.e. The, the PS3 and your television, which could result in a picture that isn't so good. But if, for just really short cables, that's not so big a deal, especially if your eyes aren't really, really picky. That's right. And, uh, you know, the longer cables will, the 10-meter cables, I think it's a maximum of 10 meters on the HDMI is the maximum. Um, you know, they are going to cost you money. That's a 30-foot cable. Mm -hmm. They're very expensive. But uh, the reality is the short cables are $12. And as a consequence, now when you get a cable or satellite receiver, uh, they will include the HDMI cable now in the box, whereas they mm -hmm. didn't before because they were too expensive. Mm -hmm. So let's move on. Um, so if you don't going to go with HDMI, if you want to have an HDMI connector uh, in, your, uh, in the back of your TV, what do you do? How do you have multiple HDMI devices into the TV? And the answer is? Well, so yeah, the, the first uh, televisions you got used to have one. They've got things uh, from companies now like Belkin and IO Gear that actually have multiple sources in here. So you can see right here I've got four inputs and one output. So you'd actually hook the one output to the TV. So if you've only got one in there, mm -hmm. then there you go. Uh, and then you can have up to four. So here's your PS3, here's your Xbox, here's your mm -hmm. uh, Blu-ray player, here's your HD DVD player, which you're still feeling too suckered uh, <laughs> into buying to get rid of yet. Yeah even though it's good for nothing. Right. Thanks a lot, Toshiba. <laughs> uh, anyways, you can have all of those things beside your thing and just uh, with the flip of a switch on the front, click, and you know, switch between them. Now, they come with remote controls as well, usually, so you can do it from across the room, so you don't have to w get up and press that, but you have the option of right. doing that. These run about $30, $40 now. Yeah, 30 40 so, uh, The higher-end ones may be up to 100 but yeah, don't, don't spend too much on them. Very good. Okay, and good. they may not work with the newer newer standards that are coming out with Ethernet yeah. and all that because they're based on the old spec. So make right. sure that the ones that you get have, you know, compatibility with at least 1.3. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, now, if you uh, HDMI, so let's say that you don't want to get one of those. You have one slot, or you have one of those, and you ha need an extra extra connection. What do you do for high definition? Well, there's a, another. I guess it would be sort of the the cheaper version of HDMI, the the ultimate solution. Um, the alternate solution. Yeah, this is called component. Component. And uh, again, nothing really changed here since we looked at it uh, back in the day, except for the cables have gotten a lot cheaper for component uh, cables as well. So with uh, this, it looks a lot like your old school RCA cables, uh, but they divide the picture up into three uh, colors, red, green, and blue. So you just uh, put each of these into the, the right connector here. And the one thing that you'll notice if you connect this up is there's no sound. This is... Uh, strictly a video technology, so you need to connect the sound up somehow. So you've got your red and white ones. Left uh, and right stereo. Left and right, like old yeah. school, and then you would plug them in like so. So I've got the yellow one attached. That's the old school yellow one for the, uh, for the old VCR style. But then you'd connect both of these, all five of these cables up to the thing at the other end. So like your Apple TV, which has it. Your Apple TV has uh, HDMI as well, but I, I'm connected by a component because my HDMIs are all used up with other things. Right. Or you can actually use uh, an optical cable, which we'll get to in yeah. a second. Well, actually, let's talk about optical now before we move on. So, okay. uh, so ultimately, left and right stereo is not going to give you surround sound. No, right? it won't. 5.1 surround sound. So, so well, let's uh, get rid of the, this cable here for the, the time being. Then, so uh, again, this is this is all analog. It's uh, it goes up to I think 1080i, um, and then if you want the the surround sound, you need something here called optical, which uh, actually sends it. Optically, it's, it's little light. beams of light mm -hmm. uh, that go through here, and then you connect it into the back of this. You gotta orient it the right way. It's a keyed so that you don't get it in backwards. And uh, just make sure that we're going. Now these the right cables are a little more expensive, I gather, yeah. over your your standard uh, throwaway stereo left and right. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a bit of a pain. I think they got something blocked in there. But oh, anyways, wow. so that that's the general thing. Is they if you plug this into one end of your device, like your Blu-ray, and then look in the other end, there's a little red light that you can see through here. Right. That, that shoots out, and then you connect it to your to your TV. Don't poke. Don't shine it in your retina. Okay. Probably won't hurt you, but oh, well, just don't. Okay? I'm not sure why they won't let me put this in there. Well, anyway, so there you go. Optical audio cables, that would be all Your TV will let you. Now, uh, we should also talk a little bit, uh, very briefly, think about the legacy connectors. You know, mm -hmm. you have the old uh, uh, com uh, composite, you know, which is a yellow video cable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You might have, have a, an SV, so there's the, the yellow yeah. one there with yeah. the left and right stereo. Yeah. You, uh, you might come across uh, S-Video, which is an old way to connect your old high-definition VHS um, 
It's yeah. called S Video. Again, and that was strictly an audio or a video. Video only yeah. and that sort of thing. So, uh, so and then I think in Europe you have something called SCART, which is an old technology as well. And we mm -hmm. we failed to mention that in episode two, and we got email from our our, uh, our European friends. Yeah. So um, anyway, so there you go. That's uh, let's. That's uh, Cables 101, TV Cables 101. Ooh, ooh, can I give off my tip? You and wait until after the break. Oh, Sean's got a oh, wicked, oh. wicked cost-saving tip around TV connectors. But that's when we come back after this. Okay, we're about to save you some money here. Uh, Sean's, this is one of Sean's favorite uh, TV connector tips. Mm -hmm. um, so, component, red, green, blue, a relatively expensive cable, cable not as expensive HD. Yeah. However, what's the tip? Well, the tip is we've got the red, green, and blue here, and uh, we've got this one right here. This is the old school connector, but you know what? Guess what? They're really exactly the same. So if they're you, different if colors. You, if you look at the tips, they're different colors, and, and that's what they're charging you the extra money for, for the most part. There's a little bit of shielding, perhaps, in these, but yeah. if you've got a really short cable, just match red to red, match uh, white to blue, and match yellow to green. That's how I remember it, and then just uh, away you go. Plug this in the same way on the other end, and you've just saved yourself a lot of money, potentially. There you go. It's, there's very little difference between the cables. Sean Carruthers saving you money. Yeah, you do not need Every this. Every episode. And I, Every I got, episode. I got another uh, tip here yeah, uh, yeah. with regards to this thing. How right to here. plug in an how, optical cable how, correctly? How to plug in there the optical go. cable. So this is a little bit confusing. It's uh, not squared off in the way that you usually see sure. on these things. So you they just tip it sideways, uh, and there you go. In it goes. Right. That was easy once you get it pointed in the right direction. So yeah. if you're having trouble, just sort of, there's a tip, spin it in all four directions before you give up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice work, Mr. Carruthers. Okay. Thank you. Hey, listen, uh, Andrew Moore Crispin does a show called Gadget TV, and uh, he recently covered a, a little gadget, it's basically a, a video viewer from ViewSonic called the Movie Book HT. So we're going to take a quick look at that, and when we come back, uh, we're going to say goodbye, I guess. That's after this. Welcome on deck, I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. So we'll do a quick product tour here. If we see on the top of the device, this is where you'll um, actually control and move through your media and the menu systems. So it's not a touch screen, which it kinda, you kind of want to touch it, but it, it, uh, it's not a touch screen. You have to use these buttons here to navigate. And on the other side, we see here there's a microphone. That allows you to record voice memos and lectures and those kinds of things, as well as a volume up and down rocker and a small speaker here. Now, this is an HD TV port as well as a headphone port. We'll get to the HD TV port in a moment. All right, I lied. I lied. We're not going to say goodbye right away. Uh, we do have one picture from Picture Time. We do have Picture Time. about that. This time. So, uh, we do have this time around uh, an international one. Someone maybe using SCART. I don't know. Okay. This is uh, from Ashish. Hey, and he's yeah. in India, and he says that he is our new Indian ambassador. He's a big Lab Rats fan. Let's go to India and do an episode of Lab Rats. Live. Yeah. And we've been threatening to do that for years. We've been threatening to do, you know, do different countries. We wanted to go to Australia because mm -hmm. we, we love Australians. Uh, so one of these days, well, maybe we'll do an international tour before episode 300. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I'm, I'm up for it. All right, so good. Ashish has a couple comments. Number one, he uh, says that, uh, that he loves Apple, but it's too expensive. Yeah, so, darn right. Yeah, so he decided uh, to go for Linux instead. And this is actually his website, tuxcrux.com. Nice, nice domain. There you so go. It's all good. Tuxcrux.com, check it out. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, tuning in this week, Pushing Play. You know, it'd be foolish for us to be here if you weren't out there. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready? Okay, so I'll show off this going in properly. I'll show Can you off the how to do it? S video. Yeah. Was it a blocker on it or what? No, no. It was the, the direction of this makes it look like it should go this way, but it's tilted sideways. Oh, I see. It's it's not a a very. It's not ideal. Okay. Uh, it's not well engineered.